in one. Town of Freedom, October 9th, regularly scheduled meeting. I hereby call to order at 6 4 p.m. To roll call, Cindy, would you like to call roll? Bracken? Here. Burns? Here. Galindo? Here. All present, sir. Thank you, Clark. <laughs> Line item number three, non scheduled guests. I do not see any non scheduled guests. Um, line item number four, discussion and action on past meeting minutes from September 11, 2019 and the September 23, 2019 meeting. I assume everybody, since they were here especially, has had a chance to review the minutes. Can I get a motion to approve those minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. We both? Yes, from September 11th and September yes. 23rd. I'll second. Bracken. Yes.
cluster, they would only have to do that once, and that would release some funding to be able to do more footage of sidewalk. So, um, my suggestion, and I'll let Randy have the floor after this, but my suggestion would be to coordinate with the DOT and whoever we need to talk to at the post office to see if it's feasible to do that. Um, I think it probably makes sense. With the only good place we have to put it, though, we would have to get Pioneer Telephone to deed us the telephone lock where the old operator's house used to be in front of the exchange building because that's the only place we have where there's enough frontage where we can put put the mailbox cluster on city property and then there would be a sidewalk on both sides of Highway 50 to get to that cluster. And I'm guessing there would be yeah, and after two or three crosswalks? Uh, I'm not totally. Yeah, I'm not for sure on the crosswalks. Uh, Postmaster's given us approval to do that, to relocate uh, as long as we communicate and pay for the mailboxes if we're going to upgrade them or whatever. Uh, it's up to us to notify and get approval from the residents. The last time I talked with the ODOT, uh, their engineer is working on that, and as whenever they get to the right point, they're going to get a hold of us for that part of the information to kind of get back with them, and I'll check with them again. Call them because they're yeah they're. Uh there's a guy that came out, I think his name is Gutierrez. Yeah, Raul Gutierrez. Now there's another guy that's been out here before that's kind of the actual engineer. Yeah, there's. And Gutierrez told me to get, or have you get a hold, or the town get a hold of that other engineer because Gutierrez made it sound like when I talked to him 30 days ago or whatever that. They had the preliminaries ready, and what they needed to know is if we were going to move the cluster, where we were going to move them to, and more importantly, if they had to be put on private or city or deeded ground, if it was out of state easement, then we needed to get started on that procedure as soon as we could because it sounded like they were ready to, to release funds, and I know they talked about 2020 and this is October. Yeah, it's going to be, <laughs> so it's going to be the last part of the fiscal year in 2020. So when they're actually going to do when they're actually going to do the work. So. Yeah, but I don't want us to be. Yep, no, I agree. We need to be yeah, make sure we're on top of it. Sorry, end up with some national postmaster <clears throat> inspector out here. We're going to get the, 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 only, the only stipulation with the mailboxes is it has to stay on the same route along Highway 50. Mm -hmm. We can move them where we cluster okay. them up how we need to. It just can't move away from Highway 50 on that route. Okay. Yeah, and right now there's not enough room. Some of the turnouts for the clusters where the clusters are now there's almost not enough room without getting out of state easement to begin with to make it big enough for the mail truck to get yeah. through there. And, yeah, and if, if we if we did it here, we're <clears throat> find out that corner lot. If we did it right here, it would make perfect sense from there. No, turn they, and the lady you know, that needed so, it wasn't. And you're on a corner. <clears throat> And it's the little there about Bill U, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know, does Bill U own all of that? No, not, not Bill U. I know, but as another option, oh. the pioneer can't, won't, whatever. As another option right down there on that west end of Bill U's, there's a larger, mm -hmm. almost the same size as Pioneer's lot. Not quite. But I mean, actual, <coughs> like, um, unused yeah, lot size. We looked at that. The, the thing, yeah, it would be a lesser option. 
I would think Pioneer would be more apt to right. just give it to us so they're not paying to have it mowed. Uh, I mean, we've been, I know it's a different division, but I think we were pretty fair with them on their, on their tower to give them some land, so it would be nice if they could give yeah. us and do you something. I'll just need a contact from Pioneer. I've got one. I've got the okay. Moreland regional areas, and then he would probably know if you need to talk to Kingfisher or what's going on. Okay. But, I, but Larry Millage, who's um, the office manager, and I've got his um, email and stuff I can okay. give you after the meeting. Um, he handles this area, and that's who I've always dealt with okay. on anything Pioneer locally. Um, yeah, back to Bill, use that, that would be a good second option, but it's tighter. Yeah, by quite a bit. Quite as wide, but it was, let's say, another. And I don't know if that's him or if that's part of Maria. So well, that's, that's what I don't, I can, I'll have Don um, call the assessor's office so and we, we find out. Do we need to have a special, or set up a special meeting to discuss this with the, anybody that wants to come talk about it from the town? I think it would be good. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It, I guess it depends on how it goes with. Yeah. Oh, okay. maybe if you need to have a preliminary meeting with the yeah, I think it was needed. Yeah. I think they DOT's should be here. fine. It's. I think we'll start with Pioneer and DOT, and we just need to get, get an idea yeah, of yeah. what space they're going to be, so they can design them in, so or where they're going to be. So. Yeah, because this, I guess, from what I understand from state DOT, they need, they need that easement filed and all of that stuff to get out it, for them to be able to build anything off of state easement for that turnaround. So I guess that's what they were anxious about. Yeah. Okay. So after you talk with Pioneer and we get whatever we need, then I can schedule it. Okay. Because it's the same. I will have to check and find out what my lead time of posting an agenda for it would be. Okay. So, and then get, I'll check that out and get with you guys so we know we can. So, is it, it, when you say public hearing, would that be the town at large or it's the people that have public hearing clusters. would be town at large if you just want to invite or get feedback from <coughs> the people that have the mailboxes, then we could just hold a special meeting and have a discussion at that. A public, meeting, a public hearing is basically going to cover both sides. Everybody, that way, yeah. anybody who wants to know about it can come and we would send special invitation to the mailbox owners for this. That's what I would. So my, yeah, I would try to have an too. open meeting at large. And my question is, is, invitation. is who sets the standard on where they are set? If it's the postmaster or is it a group of people that say, hey, we'd like to have ours here? That's what they put. I think it would be more of a good question. If you wanted the mailbox, you just pull them over here. And you have to draw your own mailbox and put it up. That was back. But yeah, because there was, you know, depending on where you live, as to what cluster mm -hmm. you work in. Cluster okay. your house. Or and I know the DOT has either posts or actual mailboxes that they use or can provide or recommend or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I think we're free to put up. But I don't have any. <clears throat> Eventually, hopefully in the next year or two, the Safe Routes to School program uh, could come in and tie into this, this ADA sidewalk program, and we can get good sidewalks back where they've always been before. Because there's still a lot of sidewalks on the west side of the highway where you can see where they were. Yeah. And I think it'd be good to have them, and if you could get, if you could 
make some kind of nice mailbox deal. It looked a whole lot better than mm -hmm. than our rural route cluster hodgepodge. If we get that lot deeded over to us, are we going to have the upkeep on it? Mm -hmm. That would be gonna, ours. It's going to yeah. be ours, so does that mean with the postmaster getting with them, we are kind of putting up the rules for it, the regulations. It's going to be, it's going to be just like it is now. I mean, the cluster yeah, that are right. out there are on the state highway property. <clears throat> but right now, nobody really has upkeep on it. I mean, that's just more there. It's a double-edged sword. We can't do anything to him right now until something happens to him, and then the post office wants you to do something about him. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. With it's coming onto our DZ ground, does that mean we have upkeep and we kind of like, like you guys are saying, put up, make it something, not just... I think we should. If we're going to move them and we're going to put sidewalks in and Pioneer's going to give it to us, I think the town... Yeah, no, that's why I'm asking, because that's something we could probably... Because so far it's been a... I mean, whenever anybody's lost a mailbox, I think Rita's taking them out of her own pocket mm -hmm. and put a mailbox up. And when Crash leveled the ones out there, I think Rob Gordy and yep. <clears throat> I don't know who else got together and fixed all that up. That's nice that people do that, but people shouldn't have to do that. You know, that's why I'm asking with it being on our... Are we going to... Being a certified city, I think it ought to be delivered door to door, but that's a whole other argument. <laughs> I'm just asking because 10 years from now, that might be the question, 20 years, who's actually supposed to keep it with everything else we've had? It'd be us. We've got all kinds of stuff we can take care of. And I'll get a count, see how many mailboxes are actually all right through there. That would be very good. Thank you, Randy. We always need to, uh, if we're able to do it, we need to have a room for spares. Oh, definitely. You know, just in case. Yeah, I'm not old, uh... The other option, which probably nobody would like, is that the post office has a lobby where they could put in a community mailbox like you see in big subdivisions or apartment complexes or a lot of small development freedom style will have something like that they would be in from the weather and a little bit more of a secure environment you wouldn't have to build any turnarounds and all that stuff and it would be further for people to go to they may not like that, but it might bring a little bit more activity downtown. And you wouldn't have to worry about mailboxes on the side of the road. <clears throat> I think we'd be doing good to get this part done with them on the side of the road, move them all together. Yes, sir. They've been there since during the Eisenhower administration, so they're going to be pushed back. I've already had one complaint about moving the mailboxes. So we'll see how it goes. I'm optimistic. That People would like to see some infrastructure improvement of the yeah. sidewalks and a mailbox system. Yeah. <clears throat> well, here we go at that open meeting. So, do you want to contact the whoever you need to and then schedule a special meeting? Yes. Yep, I'll take care of that.
Pioneer, and then after I get through Contact and Pioneer, then I will contact um, the engineer that's going to be doing the work, or drawing, setting the plans, and then we'll go from there. And we'll, I'll get a count of all the mailboxes. And all. Okay, set a special meeting if we can get that particular part done, and then we'll go from there. Sounds good to me. Ready to move to line item number seven, Cindy? Sure. If we beat the mailbox horse to death. Oh man, let's see. Discussion and possible action for the 2020 REAP grant application. All right, guys. <coughs> what have you come up with? I haven't heard anything from anybody, so I went out on my own. And I did the gas transmitters, gas meter transmitter mm -hmm. for remote read. I haven't finished and completed. Right here. Just don't happen the chance that this is something that you would want. You can peruse it and look at it. It has. Um, what it came out to was a total cost of $58,429. And that included... Installation? It has installation included on it, yes. but Stuart can do that installation. So if he can do part of that, then that would release some of the funds for purchasing extra transmitters and extra things that we may need. How much would it release? Sixteen thousand eight hundred dollars. I'm sorry, how much is what? Sixteen eight is installation. That'd be that's what would be pulled out if uh, spirit did work. But I'm leaving it in here in case he doesn't. Or so who is the 16A quote from? Is that cold all? No, cold it's all? from the meter. Meter bowl. man. Yeah, meter man. Bruce. Is that his name? Wasn't that his name? Bruce. Yeah. It's funny when you talk about stuff before you give it on paper how easy it sounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's just two screws and you put it right over the <laughs> meter dial and that's it. Yes, well, anyway, <laughs> there are pictures of, here's our meters that we have, and here's the transmitter, transceiver, sorry, transceiver, that would be attached to our meters for whenever he would drive by, push his little button, and he would do it in his little handheld. That would make our system then... The complaint system of gas and water would be on these uh, census. Mm -hmm. So we know what we buy, we know exactly what we're selling, we can pinpoint it. Right. Uh, yes. Variants. yes. And there's more. And it's accurate. And it's accurate. Uber accurate. Right. So, with that, we would have to come up with the 8,429 and local monies, which helps us on the points system mm -hmm. because that gives us it's a 14% local contribution. So that gave us 10 points to be able to do that. Um, sorry. We get, we get 60 points because gas systems has now moved into infrastructure category where it hadn't been in the past, which always kind of confused me a little bit. So that has been moved, so now we do get the maximum points for the project of 60 points. Our population being less than 1,000, we get the maximum points of 20 for population. We would get 10 points taken off for requesting the full 50,000 cap that is on it this year. But we get those 10 points back with our local contributions. It's not a CIP project or a mandatory um, consent project, so we don't have any points for those. Justification of need, anywhere from 0 to 10 points, that's based on what the cap the 
board at OETA thinks. Um, and then our prior year's project was completed in a timely manner. We actually got done really fast and were one of the first completed projects, actual physical audited completed projects of last year. So right can now... We, can you, is there a place in the grant application that you can argue the necessity that we need? Um, the justification, I put this would allow maintenance personnel to work on other projects to help keep the community safe. This should free up at least two days of meter reading time for the maintenance department and allow us to better track leaks for public safety. Well, I would award the full 10 points for that. Okay. <laughs> and then there was another, there's another spot for, um, which asks for this for the specifics of compatibility and then all of this. So basically there's not a lot of writing in this one. It's just basically here's your numbers, here's your justification. It's going to benefit 113 meters, so 113 household residents or meters um, in the town and it will retain two jobs within the town. But we're not under any consent order, we're not under any DQ consent order. And this project was kind of prefaced in last year's project whenever we said that these meters and our handheld system were compatible with if we ever went gas meters, which would then, like I said, free up Stewart's time to better focus on other projects. Unless you want to do something else, and I would get that written up and figured up as quickly as I could, because this has to be in Hooker no later than the 31st at 4 o'clock when their doors close. To clarify, this is not replacing any existing meters. No, this is the transmitter, yes. The transceiver. Yes, the transceiver would be added two existing meters because our meters are compatible with the system. Okay. So, to where the water project was replacing meters. So, the, the only question I have, because I kind of like the idea, what is the error rate of the new readout or whatever versus the error rate of human entry and that there gauge that shows. Do they happen to... That, I don't know, because I haven't talked to Bruce. Because, I mean, that could be a, a, an extra pow. Right. I mean, if... A lot of them right rate. now are, are really hard to read. And they need yeah. new covers on them for mm -hmm. some time. Right. So I'm sure that <clears throat> plays a little. But so, um, you know, at, at this point, I think... I think there's more, more benefit than just what we're talking about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. With the others, so, and I'm comfortable with moving on with that. So, probably the only way you know that is to have him read meters manually and pull that data and see what the, the variance first time, is. Yeah, yeah. The first time. And but it's really easy to transpose the right. numbers and then you got them rolling across at nine three 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 one nine and. <laughs> like that. Which happens and then Don would sit there, you know, you tap it in and you get a little ding. This is out of the norm. So then you gotta go and reread it to where this It's just on that the input. Right. Yeah, so and upwards. So I make a motion <coughs> to be, uh, go forward with that proposal. I'll second that motion. We got the program obviously. Pull it. Have full use well, of somebody's not going to like it, so I better abstain. We can still be the whole out the good guy. Just some of them are brandy. So, I mean. Um, Barton. Okay, yes. <laughs> Pure Gross. pressure. Yes. Yes. Okay. Along with this. 
Cindy, we're in a meeting. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> No, yeah, actually, you can because I can do it in the department reports. So, go ahead. Moving right along, it's <laughs> to line item number eight. Department reports. A, has the maintenance department left us a report? I did not see anything. I didn't see anything on this desk. We will address that later, Dave. Everything must be going swimmingly. Uh, office manager. Does she have a report? No, I'm guessing everything The is town is hanging good. right along. All right, line item C, this one is usually a whole nother. The town clerk slash treasurer probably has a packet of some sort. I have, since their free grant for the water meters was approved, I have a resolution stating that you all did agree that this was what we wanted to do. Whereas the Town of Freedom desires to seek funding from the Rural Economic Action Plan Fund, REAP, for remote rate gas meters in the Town of Freedom, and whereas it is the best interest of the residents of the Town of Freedom to expedite and preparation and submission of an application for financial assistance from REAP in the form of a grant. Whereas the Town of Freedom will consider accepting less than the requested amount or staging the project in phases if full funding is not available. And whereas the Town of Freedom has and pledges $8,429 towards this project if full funding is not awarded. Therefore, be it resolved that the Mayor and or Town Clerk of the Town of Freedom is hereby authorized and directed to sign an application and related documents necessary to file and process a grant application through REAP on behalf of the Town of Freedom. Okay. Can you approve that? Sign away, Clerk. Actually, you do have to sign this one because I have to attest that you signed this one. Sorry. But the application and all that, I can now sign since it is now stated that way you don't have to. That's good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I need a motion. I would like a motion. I'll second. So to do that, do we have to go back up in the line seven? No. Okay. Okay, Brian? Yes. 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 Go on. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Um, bank statements were not received until yesterday, so I do not have financials. Sorry, I know this is the problem. Understandable. Otherwise, I will get this done, submitted, and in the mail with a received receipt so that I know they got it by snail mail. Actually, certified mail. Certified snail mail? Yes. <laughs> that way I know they have it before October 31st. And I have not heard anything on the park grant. Everything was submitted. So just kind of waiting. I talked to Sage the other day, and he hadn't heard anything either. He was going to check with Vanessa, but I haven't seen anybody since then. Fingers crossed. Cool. So, still waiting on that. All right. Well, does that conclude That'll the conclude clerk and the treasurer's report? <coughs> All right, moving on to line item number nine, the executive session. Uh, pursuant to Oklahoma State Statute 307B.1 of Title 24 of Title 25 to discuss the Town of Freedom employee scope of work. Um, I need to make a motion to go into executive session at 638. Yes. You second? Mm -hmm. okay. I thought it was, do you need a second one? I did, but... <laughs> okay. Yes. 
638? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Brecken? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. 